Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about the action of the thyroid hormones and also the functions that are exerted by the thyroid hormones, its importance and also the variation in the production of thyroid hormones that is we are discussing in briefly about the hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So coming for the mechanism of action of the thyroid hormones. So we have discussed in the previous video how the thyroid hormones are produced and on stimulation by the thyroid stimulating hormone which acts on the thyroid gland, the T3 and T4 is secreted out into the blood. We also stated that T4 is produced in a higher quantity rather than the T3. However, T3 is the most active form of the thyroid hormone. So in the periphery and also inside the thyroid gland, T4 is converted into T3 by the presence of the enzyme 5' deiodinase. So before that, if the thyroid hormones has to act as any normal hormone, if it has to exert its effect, it has to first attach to the receptor. So the formation of hormone receptor complex is important. For the thyroid hormone, the receptor is present in inside the nucleus. It is intranuclear receptor. Therefore, to reach inside the nucleus, first it has to pass through the cell membrane. It was believed that the transportation of the thyroid hormones across the cell membrane is by facilitated diffusion. But now it has been very well proved and stated that there are certain transmembrane proteins which help in the transportation of the thyroid hormones. Especially it may be monocarboxylate transporter family, especially it is MCT8 and MCT10 and also organic OATP or organic anion transporting polypeptide families and many others have been isolated. So the thyroid hormones reaches the peripheral tissue after it is released from the thyroid gland. It will go inside a cell through the specific transporters which will transport the thyroid hormones inside the cell. It may be MCT or OATP to name a few. Inside the cell, the T4 is converted into the active form T3 in the presence of deiodinase. There are three types of deiodinases that has been classified. Number one is the type 1 D iodinase which is present all over the body in all the cells including the thyroid cells. Even inside the thyroid gland before the thyroid hormones are produced, few of the T4 is converted into T3. However, majority that is produced is T4. There are second type, type 2 D iodinases which also converts T4 to T3 in other specific tissues. There is third type 3 D iodinase. It actually converts T4 into RT3 or reverse T3, which is an inactive form of the thyroid hormone. Even the T3 can be converted into T2 or di diiodothyronin which is again an inactive form. This is important in case of certain situations like in brain where increased thyroid hormones is not essential, where the thyroid hormones will be converted into their inactive form if they are in an increased concentration. So however, coming back, the thyroid hormones once after it is released from the thyroid gland binds to the transporting proteins like thyroid binding globulin, prealbumin, albumin or transthyretin 
reaches the cell and it passes inside the cell through the transporters like MCT and OATP. It will be converted into an active form in the presence of type 1 or type 2 5 prime D iodinase and it the T3 attaches to the intranuclear receptor. So, this intranuclear receptor has got a ligand binding end to which the T3 attaches to. It also has a DNA binding site which attaches to a specific portion in the DNA which is referred to as hormone receptor elements or thyroid regulatory elements. So, the thyroid receptor complex sits on this HRE or TRE and there will be transcription, production of mRNA, translation and production of specific proteins which exerts the function of the thyroid hormone. So, therefore, the thyroid hormones can exert the genomic effect via this pathway that is it attaches to the intranuclear receptor, there is transcription of the certain region of the HRE, production of mRNA translation and production of specific proteins which exerts the function or it can also produce the non-genoming effect by directly modulating the membrane ionic channels. So, the T3 can directly alter the ionic channels and it can produce its non-genomic function. So, coming for the functions of the thyroid hormones, it has got a diversified function. It is used by virtually each and every cell of the body. It is important for the growth, development and differentiation of the cells. It is also referred to be as a metabolic hormone. It is also called as a calorigenic hormone. It helps in the production of heat. It is also helpful in the non-shivering thermogenesis process. So, to name a few important functions, first we will see its effect on basal metabolic rate or BMR. So, by the genomic action, it produces the specific protein. One of the most important protein it produces is the sodium potassium pump. We know it is a primary active pump that is present in a cell which helps in the exchange of sodium and the potassium. It utilizes the ATP. Therefore, whenever it utilizes the ATP, the depletion of the ATP is corrected by increased production of ATP by inside the cell by oxidative metabolism. Therefore, it increases the oxygen consumption, it increases the basal metabolic rate and oxygen consumption thereby increases the basal metabolic rate and also it increases the body production of temperature, the production of heat, you can put it as the production of heat. So, this increase in the oxygen consumption is seen in each and every cell but mediated via the thyroid hormone except in case of brain and gonads. So, these two are the temperature sensitive organs where this is not seen. The synthesis or increased activity of the sodium potassium ATPases is important for these functions to occur. If you see the effect on metabolism, however, whenever there is increased oxidative metabolism, there is in need of substrates. So, more and more substrate is necessary for increased metabolic activity. Therefore, what does it do? It increases the glucose absorption from gastrointestinal tract. It will potentiate 
the action of the other hormones like growth hormone glucagon etc it helps in lipolysis it has lipolytic activity it has got proteolytic activity the catabolism of the protein is by see by the thyroid hormones gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis is also activated by the thyroid hormones therefore by one or the other means it provides the substrate for the oxidative metabolism therefore it can increase the basal metabolic rate and the production of the atp if you see its activity on the cardiovascular system it increases the cardiac output and also it increases the respiratory rate as the oxygen is consumed more and more oxygen is needed by the body therefore increased respiration rate is seen the increased cardiac output is seen because it will synthesize more of beta 1 adrenergic receptors it helps in the synthesis of beta 1 adrenergic receptors therefore it increases the heart rate it will act on the sa node av node etc to increase the cardiac output if you see the effect of thyroid hormone on growth it will act synergetically with growth hormone and somatomedins and it helps in the bone growth it helps in the ossification of the bone closure of the bone plates fusion of the bone plates etc the most important function of the thyroid hormone is on the nervous system the growth of the nervous system in a very initial days that is during the perinatal period depends upon the thyroid hormones so in a very younger period the development of the nervous system depends upon the thyroid hormone so even if during the hypothyroidism there is decreased mental retardedness slowness therefore there is decreased activity of the nervous tissue however in hyperthyroidism there will be hyper excitability so it clearly states that it has an action on the nervous system therefore there are a diversified function of the thyroid hormones which helps in the growth development of and differentiation of the different organ systems of the body so now we'll see a few of the symptoms that could be seen in the variation of the thyroid hormone production that is during the hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism anyway we are not going into the details of it which we'll be seeing in, in the further videos here we are justly briefing out the things which are essential as far as the examination is concerned so if you see compare the hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism in case of hyperthyroidism there is increased production of the thyroid hormones which causes and the the increased bmr it causes the weight loss negative energy balance increased heat production therefore they are cold seekers so it increases the cardiac output it causes the muscle weakness and the tremors hyper excitability and exophthalmos whereas if you compare the hypothyroidism it causes the decreased bmr it causes weight gain because there is no lipolysis occurring it causes the weight gain there is decreased heat production therefore they are called hot seekers or warm seekers so the most important is the lethargy when you get a complaint stating that a very well active animal suddenly became inactive so lethargic mental slowness and bilateral alopecia bilateral alopecia that is hair loss on the both sides of the body is always an important sign of any thi- any hormone deficiency so the tragic face appearance so it is uh, the mixedema which is caused due to the accumulation of mucopolysaccharides 
and which it is an osmotically active substance which draws the fluid and it helps in the accumulation of the fluid which causes a tragic face appearance. So what are the reasons for hyperthyroidism? One is the Graves disease. So Graves disease in which there is antibodies that are produced against the TSH. So there is increased thyroid stimulating hormone immunoglobulins especially the class IgG. So they act similar to that of the T. Yes, H, they act on the TSH receptor and they continuously trigger the thyroid gland to produce more T3 and T4. Therefore, it causes hypertrophy of the gland. Thyroid gland, production of more of T3 and T4, which is hypo, hyperthyroidism. Thyroid neoplasm, again the cancerous condition where there is much more production of T3 and T4 or there may be problem in the anterior pituitary so that there is excess production of TSH secretion. Whereas coming for hypothyroidism, thyroiditis is maybe Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroiditis where there is antibodies that is produced to peroxidase. So there is no further oxidation, organification, therefore there is decreased production of thyroid hormones. Surgical removal of the gland, there is no presence of thyroid gland, therefore it causes hypothyroidism or iodine deficiency. We have seen iodine is most important raw material. If it is lesser, therefore it causes decreased production of thyroid hormones. Cretinism, which is a congenital problem or decreased TRH or TSH production from the hypothalamus or the anterior pituitary causes decreased production of T3 and T4 which causes the hypothyroidism. So if you look at the status of the TSH, so in case of hyperthyroidism, the TSH level may either be decreased. So this TSH level decreases because of the feedback mechanism by the thyroid hormones. So whenever the thyroid hormones is more, we have discussed in the last video, whenever it is more, it can have a feedback mechanism to the anterior pituitary to make TH levels decrease. Or few of the time, if the TSH level is more, it indicates that there is defect in the anterior pituitary itself. So the hyperthyroidism is caused due to the problem in anterior pituitary. So this excess TSH production, so there will be increased TSH. So if you come to the hypothyroidism also, there may be increased TSH. It is caused again due to the feedback mechanism by T3 and T4. When T3 and T4 level is decreased, in hypothyroidism, it will have a feedback mechanism on anterior pituitary to release more and more of TSH. Therefore, you can see increased TSH levels in the body. If you see decreased TSH level in hypothyroidism, it always indicates there is a problem in hypothalamus or anterior pituitary where there is decreased production of TRH itself or due to some reasons there is decreased production of TSH from anterior pituitary. So for hyperthyroidism, you can go for either surgical removal of the thyroid gland as an option or you can go for different drugs which decreases the production of thyroperoxidase. You can target thyroperoxidase and you can cause decreased production of thyroperoxidase. The reason why we are targeting TPO is that TPO, we have already said, it is essential for the production in the oxidation step, in the organification step and also in the coupling step. If the TPO is decreased, the production of T3 and T4 is also decreased. So in hyperthyroidism, we can target the TPO or you can directly remove the gland itself. So propyl thiouracil, thiouracil is the drug which may target the TPO. Coming for the treatment, uh, regimen for hypothyroidism. So the only option is thyroid hormone replacement therapy. So you should replace the thyroid hormone 
So it is available in different forms.